Hi, I'm Jean Boone from the Central Branch of the Howard County Library System. Thanks for joining me today for Preschool Parade. This is a class designed for ages two to five, and we'll share some stories and songs and rhymes that help build school readiness skills. So as you can see, I'm recording from home, which means that I can't see your smiling faces, but the good news is that you can pause anytime you like and take a break, or you can go back to your favorite part and play it over and over and over again. So let's get started today with a hello and welcome song. I've got the words right here, and I'm going to show you the American Sign Language to go along with it. Maybe you've seen this and seen and heard this song on some other Howard County Library preschool classes. So I hope it's familiar to you. It goes like this. Hello, friends. We'll clasp our fingers together. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Let's sing it twice through. All right, let's go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Hello. Thanks again for coming to join me today. And I'm looking forward to sharing some stories and things about sounds and listening. Listening is a very important skill. And as a learn early learning tip for the grown-ups out there, you can practice listening with your child by going outside or, or it, you can do it inside as well, taking time to be quiet and uh, close your eyes and just listen to sounds and then have a conversation about what you hear using all kinds of describing words. So if you go outside and listen for a while, you might hear rumbling cars or trucks. You might hear rustling of leaves. Maybe you'll hear a twittering bird. And then if you come inside and do the same thing, you will hear different kinds of sounds and you can talk about how they compare to what you heard outside. You might also want to play a game where one person closes their eyes and the other person makes some kind of a familiar sound that the person with their eyes closed has to guess. Maybe jingling keys or a banging pot or a faucet running. In fact, I'd like to play that game with you for a minute here. I have something that makes an interesting sound and I'd like to see if you can guess what it might be. Wanna try it? Okay, so you can close your eyes and get very quiet and just listen to this sound. Okay, open your eyes. What did that sound like to you? What's your guess? Did you think it might be raining here at my house? Well, luckily it's not raining, but I do have a rain stick. Maybe you've seen one of these before. Some people use them as a musical instrument. It's uh, part of a plant. Actually, it comes from a cactus. And inside this branch, it's hollow, and there are hundreds of little seeds that make this sound when you tip it. How would you describe that sound? A sprinkling sound? I think it's very soothing and gentle. I really like how it sounds. But then I really like the sound of rain. I love rain. I love when it rains and when I can be inside listening to rain and even thunder. How about you? Do you like the sound of rain? Well, in my house, not everybody likes the sound of rain. My dog hates it when it rains. She is very frightened of the sound of rain and especially the sound of thunder. Her name is Lyra and this book reminds me of her. Look at this puppy, it's hiding when she, he she hears the sound boom of thunder outside. 
Well, if you are like Lyra and you don't like the rain, you might enjoy this. Um, you might like to know this rhyme that I wanted to share with you today. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. There it is. When my dog Lyra hears the rain, she will not go outside to, to do anything. She won't go out to take a walk. So this rhyme makes me think of her. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Little Lyra wants to play. Rain, rain, go away. So we're gonna sing it and we'll sing it putting Lyra's name in. And then after that, we can try other people's names, okay? Are you ready? Here's how it goes. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Little Lyra wants to play. Rain, rain, go away. So if you're one of those people who don't like rain and would like the rain to go away, you could put your name in. Or maybe there's somebody else in your family who feels that way. The fun thing about this song is changing up the name every time you sing it. So go ahead and this time we'll sing it again and you can put in any name you like. You ready? Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. Little wants to play. Rain, rain, go away. Whose name did you say? Yours or somebody else's? Well, I hope you'll remember that rhyme and you can pull it out if, if it starts to rain sometime and that makes you mad. It's always good to have a song to sing. Well, like I said, I do like the rain. And so I was looking for a poem that would reflect that way of that feeling about rain. And I did find one that's called Happiness. It's about a boy named John who wants to go out and play in the rain. Not when it's thundering, but when it's just raining. And so I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to turn my flannel board around so that I can show you John. And this poem is written by A.A. A. Milne, who's the person who wrote all the Winnie the Pooh stories. <clears throat> Here's John. Can you see him? Now, if John's getting ready to go out and play in the rain, he's gonna need to put on some special clothes. What do you think he should put on his feet so that his shoes don't get all soggy and wet? How about some boots? Let's give him some boots. Here they are. What color are they? Bright red. Now, what should he put on his hat so his hair doesn't get all sop sopping wet? We'll give him a hat. All right, here's his hat. And that is orange. Now, what should he put on his body so that his clothes stay dry? He needs something that's waterproof, something that will keep the water from soaking into his clothes. Did you say raincoat? That is a good choice. Now, the thing is, that A. A. Milne, who wrote this poem, lives, lived in England, and in England, they call a raincoat a um, Macintosh. So we're gonna use the word Macintosh today, which is very fun to say. You wanna try it? Macintosh. So let's give John his Macintosh. There it is, and it is, what color? Bright yellow. Okay, so John looks ready. Let me get the poem here. Happiness. And here are the words. There we go. It goes like this. John had great big waterproof boots on. John had a great big waterproof hat. John had a great big waterproof Macintosh, and that said, John is that. Well, this poem has such fun rhythm to it that I like to do it with some action and movement. So why don't you stand up with me, and we're going to do some motions. 
All right, so let's put on our boots. Pretend you're pulling on boots like John has. One, two. And when we talk about the boots, we're going to stomp like this, like we're splashing in the puddles. And then when we talk about his hat, we'll tap our heads like this. And when we talk about the Macintosh, we'll tap our shoulders like this. Okay, let's give it a try. Here we go. John had great big waterproof boots on. John had a great big waterproof hat. John had a great big waterproof Macintosh and that said, John is that. Whew. Now, let's make it a little more challenging. This time, let's see if we can keep all the motions going as we add more. So we'll start with the boots, but then we'll add the hat, and then we'll keep one hand tapping our head while we start tapping for the Macintosh. I'm not sure I'm coordinated enough to do it all, but let's give it a try. See if you can do it. Here we go. John had great big waterproof boots on. John had a great big waterproof hat. John had a great big waterproof Macintosh, and that said, John is that. Oof, we did it. Good job. That was a little tricky, wasn't it? We got it all, got through it all. Now, I think John is ready to go outside and have a lot of fun in the rain. There are other ways to go out in the rain besides wearing a Macintosh and hat and boots though. You might wanna go outside and not get wet. In that case, you might carry something with you. You have an idea? How about an umbrella? Yes, an umbrella is such a nice thing to carry in the rain because it's kind of like a cocoon over your head. You can hear the rain falling on your, on your umbrella, but you stay nice and dry underneath. I have a book I wanted to share with you about a yellow umbrella, like my yellow one up here. It's called Yellow Umbrella by J. Su Lu. And the cool thing about this book is it has no words. It just has pictures. And in each picture, you can see umbrellas that are up in the rain. Like this one. Do you see the yellow one? And in the back, this book includes a CD. The CD has music on it. So you play the music and the music changes to go along with the pictures as you, as you go through the book. So the music might give you all kinds of different feelings like maybe you wanna stomp in the rain or twirl or walk very slowly and quietly. But the great thing is you can listen to the music and look at the pictures and then you could move like the music makes you want to, um, feels, makes you feel and makes you want to move. It's a great way to have looking and listening and movement at the same time. So you might wanna check this out from the library. We'll talk about how to do that in a little while. But back to my yellow umbrella, like the book that had, was full of all different colors of umbrellas, I have a bunch of them here too and I would like to count them. Do you think you could help me with that? Okay, let's try it with a song that goes sort of like, one little, two little, three umbrellas. Is that familiar, that tune? Okay, now you count along with me. We'll go a little slower. Here we go. One little, two little, three umbrellas, four little, Five little, six umbrellas, seven little, eight little, nine umbrellas, ten umbrellas up for the rain. Let's count them again just to make sure we did it right. We'll count this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 umbrellas. Oh, I think it's starting to rain. Let's count the raindrops. Ready? One little, two little, 
three little raindrops, four little, five little, six little raindrops, seven little, eight little, nine little raindrops, ten little raindrops falling down. Now see if you can make a sound like rain by tapping your knees, your legs with your hands. Can you hear mine? Now we're going to make it rain harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Oh, it's a downpour. Wow. And now the rain is slowing down and it's getting quieter and it's stopping. I think all the raindrops are drying up. Let's take them away, counting backwards. Ten little, nine little, whoops. Come back, your umbrella. Eight little raindrops, seven little, six little, five little raindrops, four little, three little, two little raindrops. The last little raindrop has dried away. Well, if the rain is gone, we don't need the umbrellas up, do we? Let's count those backwards and put them away. Ten little, nine little, eight umbrellas, seven little, six little, five umbrellas, four little, three little, two umbrellas. The last umbrella we'll put away. Great counting. That was a lot of work, forward and backward. Good for you. Great job. Now, the next thing I would like to do is share a story with you. And this is a folk tale that comes from Southeast Asia, from the country of Bali. And it's been told over hundreds of years, many, in many ways, with many different titles. And this one is called Grumpy Gecko. It's about the rain, but it's also about a gecko. Do you know what that is? It's an animal, a kind of a lizard. Some people have them for pets. In fact, we had one in our house for a little while. And I think of geckos as being very quiet animals, but the kind of gecko that lives in Southeast Asia, called the toke gecko, has a very funny noise that it makes. And let me show you what a toke gecko looks like. Here's a picture. You can see it's beautiful with blue skin and orange dots. And I'm going to play a recording of its sound for you. So see if you can make yourself very quiet. You can close your eyes if you want, but you don't have to. And listen to the gecko sound. You ready? Isn't that interesting? It almost sounds to me like it's saying its name. Gecko, gecko, gecko. Is that how it sounded to you? Okay, well, that's what we're going to need to, we're going to need that sound for our story, and you can help me with that. And then we're going, going to need to do some other sounds. So let's practice the gecko, are you ready? Gecko, gecko, gecko. Okay, then we're gonna need some fireflies. Fireflies are very quiet. They don't make a sound, but they make a flashing with their lights like this flashing and flickering and flickering and flashing. And then we're going to have a woodpecker that is rapping and tapping and tapping and rapping. Can you do that with your hands? Rapping and tapping and tapping and rapping. Good. And then we have a water buffalo. And the water buffalo is dropping poop on the path like this. Whoops. And then we have the rain. This is quietly coming down. Okay, I think that's everything we need. Now, 
Let me get my stuff together here, make sure I have all my animals in place. Where's the gecko? Here it is. All right, are you ready to make the gecko sound? Here we go. Gecko, gecko, gecko. Gecko, what's all this noise about? You woke me up, it's the middle of the night. It's the fireflies, the fireflies are flashing and flickering and flickering and flashing. Tiger, and I'm, if they're keeping me up, I can't sleep. You're the king of the jungle, can't you talk to them and do something? Well, with all your loud complaining, I'm not going to get any sleep until I do. So I'll go see if I can talk to them. Thank you, Tiger. So Tiger set off through the jungle to find the fireflies. And when he did, there they were. And sure enough, they were flashing and flickering and flickering and flashing. Fireflies? Gecko tells me that you are flashing and flickering and flickering and flashing all night long, keeping him awake. Is that true? Oh yes, Tiger, oh yes, we're flashing and flickering and flickering and flashing, but we're just passing on the warning that Woodpecker is giving. We are hearing Woodpecker rapping and tapping, and it's a warning. Hmm, I better go talk to Woodpecker, said Tiger. So off he went through the jungle, further and further to find Woodpecker. And when he found Woodpecker, he was up in a coconut tree. And sure enough, he was rapping and tapping and tapping and rapping. Woodpecker, the fireflies tell me that you are rapping and tapping out a warning. Is that true? Oh, yes, I am rapping and tapping a warning. I'm warning all the animals not to step in the mess water buffalo has left in the path. Water buffalo has pooped in the middle of the path, pop, 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 and I need to warn the animals. Oh, that sounds important. I'd better go talk to water buffalo. So, Tiger continued on his way through the jungle until he came to Water Buffalo, who was rolling around in a mud puddle. Water Buffalo? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Water Buffalo, the woodpecker tells me that you are leaving messes in the path. Blop, blop, blop. Is this true? Oh, yes, I am. But I'm doing that just because Every day, rain is raining and making holes in the path, and I don't want anyone to fall in and get hurt. So I fill the holes every day with poop, blop, 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 so no one will fall in. Oh, that sounds important. I guess I'd better go talk to Rain. So, Tiger continued on his way, and he had a long way to go to get to Rain. He had to climb to the top of the highest mountain. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And when he finally reached the top, it was almost morning and the sun was coming up. And as he reached the top and he looked out over the countryside and down the mountain, he was amazed by what he saw. It was so beautiful trees and ferns and bushes and flowers of every color were blooming lush and green and he saw streams streams that started as trickles at the top of the mountain and gathered into babbling brooks and flowing rivers and crashing waterfalls that all flowed down until they got to the sea and when he saw all that water rushing down the mountain and feeding every living thing along the way, Tiger knew he didn't have to ask Rain why she rained. He could see why 
he could see that rain rained in order to feed all the living things on the mountain. So Tiger took a nice long drink of cool water from the stream and set off back down the mountain. And when he finally got there, he found Gecko. <clears throat> impatiently waiting for him. Well, the fireflies, they're still flickering and flashing and flashing and flickering. Didn't you talk to them? What did you do? Gecko, stop complaining and listen to me. I did talk to the fireflies. It turns out they're flashing and flickering to pass on Woodpecker's warning. And Woodpecker is rapping and tapping in order to to warn the animals not to step in the mess left by water buffalo. And water buffalo is dropping her droppings, plop, 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 in the holes of the path because rain makes holes every day with her rain and water buffalo doesn't want anyone to fall in. And rain is raining every day in order to feed the streams and the rivers and the lakes and the waterfalls and the puddles all over this mountain. The puddles where mosquitoes live. Now, Gecko, what is it that you eat? Mm, I eat mosquitoes. Yes, I eat mosquitoes. Right. So, if rain stopped raining, then water buffalo could stop dropping, blop, 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 and woodpecker could stop warning, rapping and tapping, and firefly could stop flashing and flickering. But, but what? Well, but then I would have nothing to eat. Exactly. So, Gecko, you see every living thing is connected. And I think you need to just make peace with the fireflies and go home, close your eyes, and go to sleep. And Gecko decided that was good advice and did exactly that. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story with all the interesting animals in it and their sounds. The tiger and the water buffalo and the woodpecker. Maybe you would like to check out a book from the library that um, to read this story for yourself. There are several versions you can get and I'm going to show those to you in just a second. So all you need to do to check out books is to go to hclibrary.org, put them on hold using your library card barcode and PIN number, and request that they be sent to the most convenient branch for you. And then when they come in, you just make an appointment to go and pick them up. So let me share my screen with you so I can show you the covers of some of these books. Here are a couple of versions of that tale I just told you. One is called Go to Sleep Gecko, retold by Margaret Reed McDonald. Or another version can be found in the Barefoot Book of Earth Tales, along with lots of other fun folk tales. And if you'd like to um, learn some more facts about geckos, check out that book in the middle. That's where, I, um, where the picture that I showed you of a gecko, the Tokay gecko, comes from. And right below that, I have the link for the YouTube video um, that we listened to. So if you'd like to take another look, see what the Tokay Gecko looks like while it's making that sound, you can check that out. And finally, I wanted to um, point out to you that you can get National Geographic Kids through our website free every day. And this is the path. You can go to hclibrary.org, then eight. Uh, HCLS Now and eContent for Kids. And National Geographic Kids is one of many e-resources we have available on our website. And it's full of fantastic facts and photos and videos of all kinds of interesting animals. So if you'd like to learn more about some of those animals we've heard about in the folktale, go to National Geographic Kids. 
Now, I also have some great books about rain. Here they are. And there's Yellow Umbrella that we talked about earlier. And Listen to the Rain, that cute book with the puppy that's afraid of the thunderstorm. And this one, Rainfish by Lois Ellard, is a great book to have if you're stuck in the house during the, uh, a rainstorm. Her um, books are filled with beautiful collage art that she, she makes her pictures using all kinds of odds and ends that she finds around the house. And she gives you lots of ideas for what those things might be um, so that you could read the book and then try to make some art like hers at home. Uh, then next to that, Rain Feet is a board book about a boy going out to play in the rain, just like John in our poem. And finally over here, is a CD if you'd like to borrow some music from the library, get some new songs to sing to and dance along with. This one's called It's Raining, Songs for Parents and Children. And then I've got a number of nonfiction books um, here. Raindrops Roll by April Pulley Sayre is a beautiful book that shows photographs of um, all kinds of living things with, um, in the rain. So you can really appreciate how, how the rain lets, um, helps everything grow. It has beautiful words in it too. And Rumble Boom is a good way to learn about why the thunder makes the sound it does and how that happens. And finally, Water is Water is a great book to learn more about how essential water is to keeping our planet healthy. And one more resource here. Here is the book that contains the poem Happiness. It's a collection of A. A. Milne's poetry when we were very young. And um, this is also um, a printout of the poem and the picture of John. If you would like to screenshot that or download it from the internet yourself, you can use it as a coloring page. All right, so I think that is it for today. I've shared all the things that I brought with me, and now it's time for us to say goodbye. I'm going to do that with a goodbye rhyme by Rob, um, Rob Reed called Wave. It goes like this, join me. Wave high, wave low. I'm sad to say it's time to go. Wave your elbows, wave your toes. Are you wiggling them? Wave your tongue. Ah, wave your nose. Wave your knees. Can you wiggle them? Wave your lips. Blow a kiss with your fingertips. Wave your ears. I have to help mine along. Some people can wave them without, wiggle them without touching. Not me. Okay, wave your ears. Wave your hair. Wave your belly and derriere, that's French for your bottom. Wave your chin. Wave your eyes. Wave your hand and say goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. It was great to spend some time with you, and I hope I will see you all again soon. If you would like to, um, if you have any questions about this class, you can send an email to askhcls at hclibrary.org. I'm going to put that address up in just a second. Thanks again for being with us today. Bye.